Good morning friends. Today we will learn about the needlestick injury. What is this occupational hazard to the healthcare workers? How we can prevent it and what uh, management we can do in these cases? So this is an echo, occupational exposure and it could be in two types like percutaneous injury where there is a needlestick injury or sharp injury or they can be splash injury that is some fluid of the patient come in contact with the healthcare worker mucous membrane or with the non-intact skin or with the intact skin if it is for a long duration. Now there are three type of viruses which are at risk of transmission while in such cases like hepatitis B, C and HIV. Now the risk of transmission is maximum for the hepatitis B which is the 30% followed by hepatitis C which is 3% and HIV 0.3%. What are the infectious specimen which we uh, have to consider while uh, managing these cases of nidistic injury? That is the if there is exposure to the blood to any of the body fluids uh, like CSF, synovial fluid or genital secretions. But if it is a case of saliva, sputum, sweat, feces, so all these specimen they are considered to be non-hazardous. So it will not be considered in this nidistic injury. What are the prevention of needlestick injury? That is whenever uh, how we can prevent that all the standard precautions should be followed while handling any of the patient sample uh, by the healthcare worker. Proper uh, these like uh, personal protective equipments, your uh, gloves, then uh, mask. So all these precautions should be taken by the healthcare workers. Work surfaces must be disinfected with the 5% 5, uh, 5 sodium hypochlorite and all the healthcare workers should be immunized against the hepatitis B virus. If there is any spillage of blood or any body fluid of the patient that it should be immediately cleaned and it should be uh, also followed up with the disinfectant like the sodium hypochlorite. Then the disposable needle should be used and there is a maximum chances of this uh, needle stick injury when, uh, when the healthcare workers are recapping the needles. So that should be avoided and proper disposal after use. Then passing of the sharp instrument that is while uh, during the surgery, there should be a non-touch approach uh, that the instrument should not be touched. It should not be directly by the hands. In case of suturing, forceps or needle holder should be used and pre-operating testing of the patient is must. Uh, that is for all the HIV, hepatitis B and hepatitis C virus infection. So patient who have this blood-borne virus infection that is hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HIV, they require if they are being uh, having this infection, so the healthcare team, they should take the additional precautions. Surgical team who are uh, doing the surgery, so the trained staff should be taken and so that they can uh, do it more carefully. Now, how we can manage if there is some exposure occurs to any healthcare worker? That is, first of all, first aid is there, so that should be taken. Report to the designated nodal center, so there are nodal centers for these who will uh, look after these cases that is there is some hospital infection control committees there who will see all these cases so there we have to report and then the testing of this uh, virus infection that should be done in the healthcare worker also to know what is the status of that healthcare worker at that time maybe he may or may not be exposed to these viruses before this exposure so that is the thing that has to be cleared and if the uh, reports of that person from where this fluid has been transmitted, so report of that person if is available for these infections, uh, so that could be very useful. And if they are negative, then the, there is no nothing needed for the healthcare worker also. So it will be very easy. So this documentation, recording of exposure, all these are very important. If the patient is available, then you can ask him, you can take his consent and you can do the counseling of that patient to go and check for the infection of these viruses so that the status of the patient can be cleared. And if the patient is negative, so the healthcare worker uh, doesn't need anything. 
if uh, the patient is not available or the reports are not available so or if he is positive then the take the first dose of pap for the hiv and that should be taken within 2 hours so therefore if you are not able to search the patient you are not able to uh, do his test so first take the dose of pap uh, for the hiv infection because it works it has maximum efficacy within 2 hours from 2 hours it can uh, you can take up to 72 hours but the efficacy is best when it is taken within 2 hours then the follow up testing is needed for the healthcare worker after taking the prophylaxis that whether uh, some infection has been developed in the patient or not and during that follow up period the uh, healthcare worker should take the precaution uh, so that he will not transmit if he has taken so he will not transmit that infection to any other person so what we should do at that time what we should not do that is if there is any splash injury uh, you have to irrigate it you have to clean it with water at least for five minutes if any fluid has been taken within the mouth immediately spit it out and rinse it if uh, in eyes if there is any splash is there so don't remove the contact lens with it, with the lens only you have to clean your eyes and once your eyes get clean then you can remove the lens and then you can clean the lens also do not panic at that time do not place if the finger has been pricked into the mouth do not squeeze blood from wound and do not use any antiseptic and detergent on the wound now depending upon what type of exposure the healthcare worker has been exposed it has been divided into three categories mild moderate severe in mild cases there is exposure to mucous membrane or the non intact skin but with a small volume in moderate exposure to mucous membrane and non intact skin with large volume or there could be a percutaneous injury with the uh, solid needle in severe exposure there is percutaneous exposure with the, large volume by hollow needle by wide bone needle uh, by the needle which have a visible blood on it or any uh, needle which have been entered into the patient artery or vein that is the iv injections so there is very high chance so that it is uh, comes into the category of severe exposure then comes what is the hiv status code of the uh, patient from where that in, uh, that uh, fluid has been transmitted so they have been in different categories so sc1 is the hiv positive but the patient is asymptomatic and viral load is less in two hiv is positive patient is symptomatic and high viral load sc unknown means the patient status is unknown and also his sample is not available and hiv negative means the person is negative so uh, the pap should has to be continued there are some side effects of the pap is also there but if there is involvement of liver jaundice or liver tender then only uh, these drugs has to be discontinued otherwise you have to take for whole course what is the neco guideline for this post exposure prophylaxis that is the if there is uh, exposure code of any category that is the mild moderate severe but if the source is uh hiv positive uh, sorry it is negative if the source is negative then you don't need anything if it is a mild exposure and source is also asymptomatic positive hai, viral copy is less hai, still also you don't need anything but other than that any category if it is moderate exposure or severe exposure and source is symptomatic or asymptomatic but positive then you need the treatment so what is the treatment that is the pap is initially it was tle that is the tenofovir lamivudine and the afavirinj uh, that was being given single dose for 28 days now it has been changed to tl plus lr that is the tenofovir lamivudine and lopinavir and ritonavir pap is not required in which condition uh, that i have already told you if the person is asymptomatic and exposure is mild so you can uh, it is not needed if the source is hiv negative then you don't need if there is exposure to uh, low risk samples like tear saliva sputum so in that condition if source is unknown 
but the hiv prevalence in that zone is less still it is being said that you don't need the pap and one condition is very important here uh like we have tested of the healthcare worker for any of these viral infection at the time of reporting only so if at that time that person comes positive that means he is positive not because of this prick but he is positive of any past infection so at that time he doesn't need pap but he has to be referred to the art clinic where he will go for the treatment for the hiv infection now pap for the hepatitis b that is it depends upon whether the person has been vaccinated or not if he is vaccinated then you will check for the titer if titer is more than 10 then whether the source was positive for hepatitis b or negative you don't need anything but if the person who has been exposed vaccinated hai but uska titer less than hai then agar source negative hai तो आप उसको वैक्सीन दे दीजिए सो दैट उसका टाइटर राइज हो जाए एंड इफ द सोर्स इज पॉजिटिव है या अननोन है तो आल्सो गिव वन इम्यूनोग्लोबुलिन वैक्सीन तो आपको देना ही है बट आल्सो गिव द इम्यूनोग्लोबुलिन सो दैट इट कैन न्यूट्रलाइज इफ एनी ऑफ द वायरसेस एंटर्ड इन द बॉडी इफ द एक्सपोज्ड पर्सन वैक्सीनेटेड ही नहीं है या पार्शियली वैक्सीनेटेड है देन तो आपको अगर सोर्स पॉजिटिव था तो इम्यूनोग्लोबलिन भी देनी है और उसका पूरा वैक्सीन कंप्लीट कराना है अगर सोर्स नेगेटिव है तो जस्ट उसका वैक्सीन कंप्लीट कराइए सो फॉर हेल्थ केयर वर्कर वी से अगर उसका टाइटर मोर देन टेन है तो वो प्रोटेक्टिव है और दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू नो एंड इफ हेल्थ केयर वर्कर नॉट प्रोटेक्टेड तो आप उसका स्टेटस चेक करिए फॉलो अप टेस्टिंग सिक्स मंथ्स पे करवाइए and anti antibody titer ka hbs ka you have to check after uh, la two months of the last dose of vaccine and six months of the hbig administration then as i b uh, this immunoglobulins and the vaccine they should be they can be given at the same time but in the different positions or different sites then these immunoglobulins they provide a temporary protection so that is all for this um needle stick injury if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section thank you